Hello, I am Dr. Marina Magri, the lead author of the review titled Recognizing Axial Spondyloarthritis, a Guide for Primary Care. Before we begin, please see my disclosure information here. Back pain is a common health problem affecting 80 to 85% of people at some point in their lifetime and is second leading symptom prompting a visit to a primary care physician. Approximately 20% of people aged 20 to 59 years have chronic back pain and the prevalence increases with age. One important but under-recognized cause of chronic back pain is axial spondyloarthritis, an inflammatory rheumatic disease that predominantly involves the spine and the sacroiliac joints. Axial spondyloarthritis is associated with a characteristic pattern of back pain that's referred to as inflammatory back pain. The aims of this review are to introduce the concept of inflammatory back pain and other features salient to early detection of axial spondyloarthritis and to discuss strategy for identification of patients with axial spa among patients with chronic back pain in primary care setting. Axial spondyloarthritis is a disease predominantly affecting the axial skeleton but also involves peripheral joints and theses, extraarticular organs such as skin, eyes, and intestines. Axial spot typically develops in individuals younger than 45 years and has a peak age of onset between 20 and 30 years. Chronic inflammation in the sacroiliac joints and the spine results in back pain and stiffness and can over time lead to pathological new bone formation structural damage, and ultimately fusion of sacroiliac joints and the spine in some patients. The concept of axial spondyloarthritis, which includes AS or ankylosing spondylitis, was first established by a set of classification criteria developed in 2009 by the Assessment of Spondyloarthritis International Society, ASAS. According to the ASAS classification criteria, Patients who experience chronic back pain before the age of 45 years have axial spa if they have imaging evidence of sacroiliitis by MRI or radiography plus at least one spa feature or are positive for HLA-B27 and have two or more other spa features. Features of spondyloarthritis include inflammatory back pain, peripheral inflammatory arthritis, enthesitis, uveitis, dactylitis, psoriasis, Crohn's disease, or ulcerative colitis, good response to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, family history of spondyloarthritis, HLA-B27 positivity, and elevated C-reactive protein. Patients with axial spondyloarthritis who have obvious structural changes on the radiographs of the sacroiliac joints indicating sacroiliitis are classified as having radi radiographic axial spondyloarthritis which is for all practical purpose, the same as traditional ankylosing spondylitis. Patients who have axial spa based on symptoms and other clinical features, but lack obvious radiographic changes of sacroiliitis have non-radiographic axial spa. Clinical judgment is considered the criteria standard for diagnosis of AS and axial spondyloarthritis. The hallmark feature of axial spondyloarthritis is inflammatory back pain which is characterized by insidious onset of chronic pain lasting more than three months before the age of 40 to 45 years. Patients usually wake up in the second half of the night due to the back pain. The pain improves with physical activity but not rest, associated with morning stiffness persisting for more than 30 minutes and usually has good response to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Many of these characteristics of inflammatory back pain contrast with those of mechanical back pain. Patients with axial spondyloarthritis also frequently have extraarticular manifestations like uveitis, psoriasis, and inflammatory bowel disease, and additional comorbidities associated with axial spa are fatigue, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, and sleep apnea. The true prevalence of axial spondyloarthritis is unknown, and large differences between diagnostic prevalence and population prevalence have been reported, which may reflect substantial underdiagnosis in routine clinical practice. 
the average delay between symptom onset and diagnosis is estimated to be five to seven years, with evidence that delay can be significantly longer in women than in men. Several factors may contribute to this delay in diagnosis, including the high prevalence of back pain, most commonly due to mechanical etiologies in the general population. The lack of specific physical exam findings in patients with early axial spa and absence of extraspinal manifestations have been reported to impair early diagnosis. The lack of biomarkers unique to axial spa, younger age at onset, and gradual disease onset may also contribute to delayed referral for evaluation by a rheumatologist. Instead, patients may be referred to and treated by orthopedist, physiatrist, chiropractor, and other providers in an attempt to relieve symptoms. Paradoxically, a good response to NSAIDs may also contribute to a delay in diagnosis because further evaluation may not be pursued when patients report improved symptoms with NSAIDs. Lack of access to rheumatologists, inadequate referral guidelines, and long waiting times may also contribute to the diagnostic and therapeutic delays in some areas. Screening and referral strategies have been developed to help primary care physicians determine whether axial spondyloarthritis should be considered and to guide the initial evaluation for suspected axial spa, including support in making the decision whether to refer the patients to a rheumatologist. For example, according to a strategy proposed by ASAS, patients with chronic back pain for at least three months with an onset at age 45 years or before should be referred to a rheumatologist for further, further evaluation if they have any one of the following parameters. Inflammatory back pain, HLA-B27 positivity, imaging evidence of sacroiliitis, peripheral manifestations such as arthritis, enthesitis, or dactylitis, extraarticular manifestations such as psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, and or uveitis, family history of axial spondyloarthritis, good response to NSAIDs, or elevated acute phase reactants. Although the optimal referral strategy may depend on details of the healthcare environment, axial spondyloarthritis should also be considered in the differential diagnosis of back, chronic back pain, particularly in younger patients. It is critical that primary care physicians screen for inflammatory back pain and other axial spa features and refer patients with suspicion for axial spa to a rheumatologist for further evaluation. The goals of treatment for axial spa include alleviating symptoms, optimizing function, and preventing structural damage to the spine. The initial medication class for treatment of active axial spa is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory therapy. Treatment with a biologic drug is indicated for active axial spa if a patient is intolerant to NSAIDs or has an inadequate response to two or more NSAIDs at a therapeutic dose for two weeks each. Several tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 17A inhibitors are available for the treatment of axial spondyloarthritis. The selection of biologic therapies may be influenced by comorbidities, availability, including insurance formularies, response to prior treatment if previously treated with a biologic drug, patient preference, and other factors. Neither traditional disease-modifying drugs, such as methotrexate or sulfasalazine, nor systemic glucocorticoids are recommended for axial manifestation because there is little evidence of their clinical benefit. In summary, axial spondyloarthritis is a chronic inflammatory disease that causes back pain and stiffness, reduces mobility, and decreases the quality of life. Axial spondyloarthritis affects about 1% of the U.S. population but is currently underdiagnosed. Patients without a diagnosis are unlikely to receive appropriate treatment and may experience worse symptoms and poor outcomes in the long term. As the first-line providers of care for patients with back pain, primary care physicians must be aware of the clinical features that suggest axial spondyloarthritis, particularly in younger patients. Raising awareness of all the manifestations of axial spondyloarthritis among primary care physicians should improve the recognition of the disease and facilitate the timely referral of appropriate patients to rheumatologists for early diagnosis and effective management. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. 
Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.